Welcome to For the Quantum Grammar Shoot, the only podcast of its kind on the interwebs as far as I know. I'm your host, Colin Jason, I'm Matthew Colin Glass. I'm a grammar tutor. I teach correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, the uh, mathematically certified grammar technology that was brought forth to the public by the late Colin David Eiffel Wynn, Colin Miller. And uh, that's what I do. I have a YouTube channel, which if you're watching this, you already know about it. And uh, I'm also on some other social media platforms. Uh, this is a slow growing thing for me because not Everybody, I'm finding out, not everybody uh, possesses the volition to learn this. And that's fine. It's their choice. Uh, But for anybody out there who says that this grammar technology needs to be brought forth, or that the fiction system is hiding quantum grammar, not true, my friend, not true. Because if you do a search of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, my YouTube channel will pop up in that search on Google. And there are over 500 videos on that channel that give closure to correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. So if you want to learn the entire grammar technology on your own, you can do it, theoretically, through my channel. So... That's why I got to kind of laugh when people talk like that. And it's usually people that don't know it or haven't used it that say that. All right. As I've said before, through my five plus years of teaching this to people all over the earth, experiencing different, you know, cultures and personalities and people with different volitions and things like that. I can safely say that only the 1% of the 1% of the 1% are ever going to get closure on this. Are you one of those? Let's find out. So, the other day I got a comment on my YouTube uh, video. Uh, I do reaction videos to viewers' comments. And, uh, like, I'll post up the comment and address it. Whether it's a question, criticism, or someone trying their best to create a correct sentence structure, and I'll critique it. One viewer kind of took exception to that, and that viewer's name is JC, and I am using his nom de guerre YouTube handle because he uses it in the public. And uh, I'm going to address that in an upcoming comments video. But I'll also address it here because I feel it's important to clarify what I said in a very short video uh, yesterday. Where I said, correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar is not for the weak. It's for those who are confident and it's about correctness. Now, I do need to clarify that. All right. What I meant by weak is not in a physical sense or anything like that. What I mean is, for myself, I had to learn not to take things personally. When someone critiqued my grammar, okay, I'm going to use a first-hand knowledge example of this. My tutor, Colin Raven, hyphen, Farhad, hyphen, Tohidi, Colin, I've written. From my best memory of when I was going through the rigors of learning this stuff, when I would get, like, like I would take things a little bit personally when he would say, that's wrong, or that's not correct. And, and when I would get up in my feelings, he, he would just, from my memory, just not say anything about it. No words of encouragement, no words to deter me. He just wouldn't address it. And leave it to me to decide what I was going to do. And so eventually, you know, maybe I didn't talk to him for a day or two. (laughs) And then I would contact him again and be like, you know, sorry, I got a little hot under the collar with that one. 
And he was perfectly fine with it because I feel like he knew like my personality and at the time. And while he was teaching me the grammar, he was also teaching me how to maintain rule one, rule equal within myself, emotionally and spiritually and all that stuff. Whether he knew it or not, that's what he was doing, which has brought me to the point where I am now, which I, I address things sort of in the same way. Except for me, I'm a little bit more, how shall we say it, pushier. Because in my five years of teaching so many people and interacting with so many people, I, the, the now space is very precious. And I don't really want to dilly-dally with people who are not capable of learning this or don't want to learn it. I definitely don't want to dilly-dally with people that need to be coddled. Raven definitely did not coddle me. And I take the same approach because if you do that, then what's going to happen if you're actually in a situation where you are under duress, under th possible threat of all kinds of harm from the fiction system, they're not going to coddle you. No one's going to coddle you. You have to be able to hold a position. You can't get butt hurt when they say mean things to you or things that you construe to be mean because they will say personal, very nasty things at times. It happens. And you can't really let that knock you off your square. No, that's not a Masonic reference. Or maybe it is a Masonic reference, but I'm not using it in that way. The point I'm making and my volition behind what I'm saying is the important thing here. You have to have a center you have to hold a position, and you can't let them knock you off of that position. That's what I'm saying. And so this JC individual, <laughs> I think I critiqued his attempt at correct sentence structure, and I tore it apart, and then I told him how to correct it. And he comes back with, you were a beginner once too, you know, as if, I'm picking on him or something, or her. I don't know if it's a him or a her, um, which I'm not. And if you're going to feel like that, if you're going to, if if that's the way you're going to approach correct sentence structure, then I, I've seen it in the past. You're just you're going to have problems. It's going to be a bigger challenge for you than it would be for someone who doesn't take things personally. It's, you're going to have way more obstacles to surmount because not only are you going to have to confront the fiction system, but you're also going to have to confront your own emotions when you're in those positions like and have more of a challenge than most people because you take little things, you take little critiques, you know, personally. So that's what I'm saying here. And then, and then he goes on to say that, well, maybe if you wouldn't use people's real names when addressing their comments, you'd get more comments. I'm like, what in the hell is this individual talking about? People leave comments on my channel using a YouTube handle. It's normally not their correct name, much like JC. JC is a nom de guerre. They don't use their correct name. They don't participate with rule one, rule equal. They don't even try. And they are telling me Maybe if you don't use people's public nom de guerre, which makes no sense to me. If someone out there can make sense of it, that'd be cool. But in my mind, I know the difference between public and private. I know the difference between public and confidential. And if you post a public YouTube comment on a public YouTube video, then the public can see it. So what is the difference if they are scrolling through the comments of that video on their own or whether they see a screenshot of that comment in a comment reaction video. What is the difference, JC? Let me know. Because uh, I don't see one. Other than the fact that I'm focusing in on certain comments because for me to go through and give Kuleana to every single comment that I get uh, at times could be difficult. And I also feel that 
with my knowledge cultivation docket that uh, responding to them in a video so that many, many people can see it is the better option. But then again, I've been running this YouTube channel for five plus years as a content creator with over 500 videos of content that 99% of it I created myself with me in the video, uh, edited and stuff. I didn't just regurgitate other videos. Uh, I created original content, over 500 videos, and uh, that's my experience. I don't know what JC's experience is as a content creator or, you know, giving Kuliana to YouTube comments, how long they've had a channel, how many subscribers they had, how many videos they had. Well, you know, I just don't know. So that's another thing to consider. When you use correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, you have to be able to hold a position. Do you have weight behind your position? Because if you decide to jump up onto the geometric level playing field of contract and you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get knocked down pretty quick. And it's the same thing with anything. Like if you... <laughs> If you're one of those, you know, fellows that sit in the first five rows or whatever of a mixed martial arts contest and you're drinking a beer and you got your popcorn and you think that, you know, you're the number one corner man that you know more than what a professional fighter knows. And then you just jump in there with a professional fighter. You know what's going to happen. Maybe you've been training for a couple months. I don't know. Still, you're going against somebody who has thousands of hours of repetitions of throwing strikes and wrestling and submissions and grappling. You're going to get your butt handed to you. It's the same thing. You got to know what you're doing for your own safety. And even if you do know what you're doing, you still might get hurt. But it's best to walk in knowing what you're doing with full confidence because then you can be do everything that you need to do to stay safe. And if you've done everything that you need to do to stay, to stay safe, if you've gotten all those closures that you need to have, then you've done all you can do. And whatever happens, happens. And you can be okay with it. That's the way I look at it. I know that at the end of the day, the fiction system has the bigger guns and clubs that might makes right. That's the only way they keep the system in place. If someone else came along with bigger guns and clubs than them, you can bet your butt that that fiction system would be smacked down and a new system would be put in place by force. Might makes right, which negates contract, by the way. That's why correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar cannot have those types of concepts in it because war negates contract. When you force someone to do something against their will, that is rape. And it negates contract. That is the long and the short of it. A lot of you RJG cult followers out there don't seem to get that. His version of his quantum gobbledygook system is just basically taking the existing fiction system and swapping it out with his quantum gobbledygook system using the same might makes right mentality. I can't, I mean, there was a time in, what was it, 2019, 2020, I think, maybe? <clears throat> Somewhere around there, where he was, he had a falling out with his, uh, I guess it was his security advisor, Sergeant Robert Horton. And there was a series of videos that, that RJG put out where he was saying the F word, cussing, yelling and screaming, kicking things, threatening. He actually made a quantum gobbledygook document that demoted, well, allegedly, supposedly demoted Sergeant Robert Horton to a, and, and he used colons and hyphens in it, to a trashy, trashy bitch. I'll just say it one time. What kind of an individual would make a document like that? That would put vulgarities 
in a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, document? That's a rhetorical question, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Not even the fiction system resorts to things like that. It's very, uh, by my own, you know, opinion, it's very junior high-ish, if you will. Myself, I hold the grammar to be sacred. I would never, ever use vernacular like that. Ever, 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 ever. Because what you bring forth into the cosmos is a direct reflection of your inner core being of who you really are. And that speaks volumes. Think about that the next time you choose your words, whether it's verbally or you choose your actions or you choose what you put down on a document. Think about that. What you're putting there is a direct reflection of who you are, what kind of person you are, what kind of man or woman you are. Think about that. When you see that, that tells you all you need to know about an individual, usually. Now, again, as I put in another uh, podcast at some other time, that's what separates us from other living creatures on earth. Is that we possess the wherewithal and the capacity and possibility of stopping and correcting ourselves by ourselves. Other creatures will learn by, usually by comfort or discomfort. If something is not comfortable to other creatures on earth that aren't humans, they, they will learn, well, let's avoid that because that's not comfortable. We don't really want to do that. Unless it has to, something to do with survival. And in order to survive, you have to do something uncomfortable. Well, then they'll probably do it. But most times, if... For example, I don't even know about an uh, example to use. Uh, if a kitty cat, uh, you know, an outside cat, is walking by uh, a big pit bull. And every time the cat walks by the pit bull, the pit bull runs out and tries to get it. Well, the cat's just not going to walk by there anymore, are they? That's how they learn. Humans can learn in the same way, but we don't have to. We can learn another way. We can learn through, uh, for lack of a better way to say it, force of will. Exerting force upon ourselves to stop and correct ourselves, perhaps from not taking things so personal, not getting butthurt over someone criticizing us and coming back and taking accountability for ourselves. This, from my perception, is exactly what happened with that Stephen Temple fellow uh, a month or two ago that contacted me and was telling me, like, leaving super long comments and emails and saying that David Wynn Miller had written his quo rental complaint and... He also took courses from Mark, Cushon, Chris, Mark lowercase k, Cushon Christopher, I guess. It looks as though he did because he uses a lot of Mark's uh, keywords that Mark uses, like final solution and name and shame and bad faith and things like that. And he also was part of the Red Thumb Club for a while, self-admittedly. And... Uh, he came to me and I started making, because he came to my grammar channel and people that come to the grammar channel, if you're there, then your volition is to learn the grammar. Otherwise, there's no other reason for you to be on my channel. There is no other reason for you to comment on my channel unless you're there to learn the grammar. Of course, people can choose to be trolls and be smart asses or whatever, that's their choice. I'm just probably not going to publish their comment. I usually only publish things that have to do with the grammar, and also, by extension, the psychology of the grammar. So in that light, I was responding, giving Kuliana to Stephen Temple's uh, comments through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, psychology. 
because he said that the fiction system harassed him for many years, put him in jail, railroaded him. And David Wynn Miller wrote his Quo Rento complaint. And even though David Wynn Miller, the great David Wynn Miller, wrote the Quo Rento, he still ended up in jail. Still got harassed. Why? Well, I started postulating reasons. One reason, Stephen doesn't know the grammar. Second reason, his name isn't even on the, that Quo Rento complaint by the way he wrote it. Third reason, he didn't write the Quo Rento. He's not the author. He has no authority over it. The person who wrote it, who authored it, has authority. Notice, the word author is in the word authority. An authority is an author. Stephen Temple was not the author of it. Therefore, he had no jurisdiction over it. I could go down the laundry list, but I won't go any further. And he, <laughs> he got up in his feelings. He took it personal. Um, I did schedule a consultation with the guy. He never showed up. Never even gave a notice that he wasn't going to show up. He just didn't show up. And then I sent out a void, voidance of the consultation location email to which then he wrote back saying that blaming me essentially for not making sure that he knew about the time difference. And again, as I said at the beginning, ladies and gentlemen, and I've said over and over ad nauseum, I'm not a babysitter. I'm not a coddler. If you, if you yourself cannot certify and verify and be aware of your position in the now space as it relates to another contract party that you're in contract with, then I have to question your capacity to use this stuff safely in the public venue under duress. You have to know where you are, your now space location. It's very easy to find out. Google is a wonderful tool. And I say that with sarcasm. <laughs> and again, there's no need to get butthurt about it. All Stephen had to do was say, you know what? I'm sorry. It's my bad. I didn't take the time to figure it out. You know, I'm used to having babies. People, you know, spoon feed me. And, uh, whatever, coddle me, I apologize. Okay, now I'm being really sarcastic. But you see the point I'm making. All Stephen had to do was apologize and say, can we schedule another one? And I would have said, yeah, let's do it. Boom, scheduled another one and went through with it. But no, instead, he had to try and whatever, get defensive and blame me instead of just taking accountability for himself. This is my vessel. I know where I am at all times. I keep my appointments. And if I can't, or for some reason I'm going to come in on a rum line, I will give notice to it. I will say, sorry, I'm not going to be able to make this appointment. Um, I'm going to have to reschedule. But that's what, you know, big boys and girls do. And... <laughs> And I'm, I am purposely using RJG's terminologies here where he was talking about David Wynn Miller, you know, running with the big boys, run with the big dogs, you got to get off the porch. And David couldn't get off the porch. Well, if you're going to step up onto the geometric level playing field of contract, you have to know where you are in the now space as it relates to the other parties you're contracting with. Because with contract, everybody has to know what they're doing. Everybody has to have closure on the terms and conditions of the contract moving forward. I run into this all, you know, well, not all the time. Recently, though, for some reason, I've run into it a couple times where people don't read the contracts that I send them. And then they blame me because they agreed to a contract that they didn't read. Just the same as someone agreeing to a mortgage contract that they didn't read. Or someone agreeing to the Facebook terms and conditions and then getting mad when Facebook deletes their posts or puts them in Facebook jail. It's like, are people goofy? I mean, what is this? Since when is it ever okay to agree to a contract that you have no knowledge of? And if you don't know the terms and conditions of the contract, if you don't understand, you can't comprehend or cognize it, 
ask questions of the author of the contract and get closure. It's that simple. It really is simple, ladies and gentlemen. I don't, I'm not trying to patronize anybody out there. I really am not. What I'm doing is telling you the contract is sacred. And make sure you read the contracts that you agree to. Make sure you know all the ins and outs. Because if you don't, it's nobody's fault but yours if something detrimental happens to you from a contract that you agreed to. So many people do this. They don't read the contract. They agree to it. They move forward. And then something comes up that they don't remember reading in the contract or they didn't read in the contract. And now they get mad and they want to go outside and get a third party and bring a third party in, such as the fiction legal system, and sue somebody. When, from the beginning, they should have just put their big boy pants on and took care of themselves. That's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. I appreciate your listenership, your viewership, your subscriptions, um, your memberships, your studentships. Appreciate all of it. Thank you very much for listening. That about does it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.